Uh, hi guys, we're going to look now at um, power factor correction, and we're going to I'm going to try and show you how uh, we can reduce the total current by improving the power factor on a simple AC inductive circuit. The particular circuit we're going to look at represents that of a single phase motor winding, which is made up of inductors L and resistance R. So in an AC induction motor you'll have obviously the coils which are inductive however there is no such thing as pure inductance all inductors will have some resistance so hence that's why we have an R there and the dotted line around represents that as the motor so IM is the motor. IC is the power factor correction capacitor which we haven't fitted yet so that's going to be in the second part so if we do a very quick phase of sketch then obviously this is going to be a parallel circuit because we're going to have IC going down one branch and we've got IM going down the other and obviously we've got cross volts so voltage is going to be common to both parts so I'm going to draw that sketch and it is a sketch it's not to scale now if you remember from your AC theory days when we talk about civil, okay, so right, civil. In a capacitive circuit, I leads V, where V leads I for L for an inductive circuit, yeah? So phases rotate anti-clockwise, yeah? So that's our phase of rotation. And what we're gonna have is, we're gonna have current going through the inductor is IL. And we're going to have some current going through the resistor IR. And I don't know what these values are, so we're just basically working out, like showing you what the phase are, the directions, and so on. Whoops, let me screen back. So the resultant of them two together, the phase of sum of IR and IL, gives us basically IM. So that's the total current I motor. Okay, it's the phase of sum. And the angle that's between okay, the resistive power and the total power is the power factor. Yeah, so you could call that the true current. The reactive current, which is going to be from the uh, the actual inductance, will known we're going to call as IL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this IL1 and total motor current one because this is without the correction. Okay, so that's what our phase is going to look like. So let's put some figures in then. So before we start, we know that the power factor is given as 0.67. So the factor, so to change that into an angle, we need to cosine the factor to get the angle. So I'll inverse the cosine factor. So make sure your calculator's in degrees and not radians. So we go to cosine, shift cosine, so inverse cosine, 0.67, which gives us 47.93 degrees. Okay, so that's what this angle is going to be. So we can do a bit of a sketch now. So let's do a sketch. Okay, so 47 degrees is going to be quite steep. It's going to go down here. It's going to move my screen up a little bit more. That's it. So the resistive current is here, and that won't change because that is current from the resistor. So that's actually what we know as the true current, or if that was a power triangle, that is the true power. So that's going to be the wattage. That's the actual current that is being used, and we call that useful. All right. This down here is the reactive component, which is the unuseful current. So that's wattless power. And what's the reason why that isn't used is because on the positive cycle, the uh, inductor will store energy. And on the negative cycle, it will release it and give it back. Um, and then on the positive, it'll store, release, store, release. So what happens is, is current bounces backwards and forwards through L and it isn't really used, but it is occupying vital space in our cables and our switch gear. So basically it's contributing uh, to the total current. 
which is a bit of a problem uh, because we can make it efficient. So let's just work out then all the sides of the current of this triangle. So it's all trigonometry. So if that's our, if that's IM, quick recap, soccer tower. So the cosine of the angle is the adjacent IR divided by the hypotenuse IM. Okay. Um, and also what we have is IL. So the opposite side is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. All right, soccer tower. All right. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right. So what we've done there is we've just rearranged that to get IL. Okay. So let's put some values in. So from the example given in our brief, we know that we've got a power factor of 0.67 and we've got uh, a 12 amp total supply current. So from that then, we know at the moment that IM is 12 amps. Okay, so to work out the current taken by the resistor, IR, so this top line here, then we're going to basically transpose this formula here. So that's going to go up to there in it. So we're going to get IM times the power factor, which is going to be 12 times 0.67, which I believe comes to about 8. Let's have a look. Times is 8. 0.04 amperes and IL is going to be IM times the sine of the angle so that's going to be 12 times the sine of 47.93 so 12 times gives us 8.91 amps. So let's label this up then. So we have 8.91 amps here. We have 8.04 amps there. And we have 12 amps from our brief. Now what's interesting here is, at the moment, the current through the resistive part won't change because that, like I say, that is the useful part. However, if we reduce the phase angle, so in other words, if we reduce the reactive component, then the phase angle will reduce. And as the phase angle reduces, then the hypotenuse is going to be less. And that is how we save current. So what we'll do now is we will do exactly the same, but we'll work it out with the new uh, obviously uh, with the power factor improved. So now this time the new power factor is going to be 0.95. So let's find out what the angle is of that. So we inverse cosine the factor Oops, to get the angle which is a lot less 18.19 degrees so obviously this isn't a scale it's just a sketch but you can see there the angle is much we've gone from 47 degrees which was down here now to a much more improved angle so now using uh, our trig functions we can work out the others so we know that the new motor current, IM, is going to be, so if we do our factors, so the cosine of the angle is the adjacent, IR over IM, okay. So IM is going to be IR divided by the cosine factor, which is gonna be 8.04, divided by the new power factor, 
so eight point three four, which gives us now eight point four six amps. So that's much better. So now I am. Um, I'm going to put a two on there because it's been improved. Is now eight point six. Uh, sorry, eight point four six. Whereas before it was um, obviously a lot less than that. Um, sorry, it was greater than that before. It was twelve amps before. It was twelve. So we've saved a good three and a half amps there. This side. So I'm going to call this IL two. Now we need to know the reactive current because we need to know how much we need to take off to improve it. So that's going to be IM2, so the total current, the motor current, times the sine of the angle. Okay, so that's going to be 8.46 times the sine of 18, because that's 18 there, isn't it? 18.19 degrees, 18.19 degrees. And that equals, and IL2 is going to equal 2.64 amps, which is much lower. So what we need to do now then is we need to compare so our before and after. So that's not going to stay the same, 8.4. Um, that was our previous current, so we had 12 amps there. It's going to look back to the previous slide, um, and we had um, on there. Just bear with me a second when I find it. Yeah, previously we had 8.91 when the power factor was 0.67. Now, with the new power factor improved to 0.95, that IL2 is only 2.64. Okay. Uh, that's IL1 there, so IL1, let's change that, so that is IL1. So as a comparison then, before the factor, the reactive current was 8.64, with the power factor correction improved to 0.95, the new reactive current is 2.64. So we need to take this away okay well actually because it's a phaser if we add that on the here that is going to take that on the leading edge off the trailing edge so this is actually the current flowing through the capacitor so this is ic then ic on our phaser remember in a capacitive circuit i leads v so now the current through our capacitor is leading whereas the current through our inductor is lagging so to find the difference, we take the two away, and that gives us 6 amps. So we need 6 amps to go through our capacitor, which takes, which basically adds that on the negative of the inductor, which leaves only 2.64 amps on the inductive circuit. So now we know the current required, we now need to select the value of the capacitor. So if you remember from our Ohm's law days, we know that V equals I times R. And in AC theory, V is going to be I times XL and V is I times XC. So that's what we have here, XL, R, XC. So we need to work out, basically, we need 6 amps to flow through our capacitor. Okay, so that's quite easy. So we transpose the formula. So XC is V over I C, which is going to be 230 over 6, which gives us 38.33 ohms. Capacitive reactants, XC is 2 pi FC. Rearrange that for C. Two, so C equals 2 times pi times frequency times reactants. So we've got 2 times pi, it's 50 hertz. The reactance is 38.33, which gives us 83 microfarads. So what that will do is an 83 microfarad capacitor will reduce the current from 12 amps down to, finally, our much lower amperage, okay, of 8.46 amps. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.